Hello. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Eclipse development environment with WebLogic Server 12.2.1. As part of this video, I will first be installing Eclipse from an installer delivered with a WebLogic Server 12.2.1 distribution. I will then be adding WebLogic as a server type, importing and building a Java EE7 demonstration project, and then building, deploying, and running that on WebLogic Server 12.2.1. Let's get started. What I have here is an installation of WebLogic Server 12.2.1 using the new quick install or developer distribution. One thing we're now bundling in the developer distribution is the new Eclipse network installer. This is a small installation wizard which enables you to specify a version of Eclipse that you wish to install, which it will then download from the network and place on your system. It also gives you the ability to specify a set of components you wish to install into your Eclipse environment. The network installer can be started from an Eclipse script that's delivered within WebLogic Server. When the wizard launches, it will download the available set of configurations that it knows about. There are different options for installing Eclipse and a set of prepackaged components. Let's choose Explore Available Options based on the required capabilities just to allow me to highlight what the options are. Here we can see listed the available capabilities. The Eclipse script that we've launched has already preset that Oracle WebLogic Server 12.2.1 is a required capability. To that, let's add Java 8. We'll add Maven. We'll add Oracle Cloud. What that then does is presents us with a number of uh, options. I'm just going to go with a default at this point. We specify the location of a Java 8 runtime. And then finally, I'm presented with a list of components that I can optionally choose to install. Let's deselect all these for the moment so we can choose what we want. So into this environment, I want to put our cloud tools, I want to put our Oracle Java EE tools, the Maven tools, the WST tools, the WebLogic server tools, of course and the documentation for the Java EE7 API. The licenses for the various software components that I'm going to be installing are presented and I can now go ahead and choose to accept them. I will accept them all and click install. At this point, the network installer will now go ahead and based on the configuration I've selected and the components I wish to have installed, download those modules and install them locally onto my system. This will now run for a short while. Welcome back. The Eclipse Network Installer has now completed its task of downloading and installing the version of Eclipse and the components I chose to my local system. It is now launching the Eclipse product so I can begin developing with it. To get started from within my Eclipse environment, the first thing I want to do is add a new server type for my WebLogic Server 1221 environment. A 
I'll select 1221 from the list of available WebLogic server types. I then need to tell it where the install is located. It picks up the Java home. It's now asking me for the domain directory. One of the nice things with the integration with Eclipse and WebLogic Server is the knowledge that it provides in terms of being able to understand and recognize domains, etc., that are configured for the installation. I'll use the base domain from my previous video and I'll finish it there. You can see that from here it's possible to launch the WST console, launch the admin console, etc. What I'll do now is import an application. In this case, I know I have a Maven application. And for the purposes of this demo, we'll pull in a new uh, batch API based application that does some payroll calculations. Maven imports it for me. I can see by looking at the POM that this is using the Java EE7 API. I can drill down into the code of the application and here are the classes that um, provide the application utilizing the batch API. The simple item processor is the piece of application logic that does the payroll calculations. Here you can see we've got a tax rate of 25% being applied. What we'll now do is we'll run the application. I'll choose to run it on this instance of WebLogic. And we'll finish it up. The first thing Eclipse will do will be to start the WebLogic server instance. That's underway. There WebLogic started. And Eclipse will now go through the process of building, packaging, and deploying the application. And there it is, the application that displayed in a browser inside the IDE. We'll just click through the application to see how it works. Here I'm presented with a bunch of payroll records for different months of the year. We have an employee and a base salary. By clicking calculate payroll, I'm gonna click fire off a batch job, which is gonna go and calculate the individual payroll records for each of the employees. So here we can see for employee ID, the base salary, their bonus, their tax rate, and their net salary. So that's an example of running a batch application on WebLogic Server 1221 deployed from within Eclipse. As a final thing, let's just modify the tax rate to show how quickly a deployment operation can be re-performed. We'll change the tax rate to 50, and then run that on the server. Click Finish. It's publishing those changes, and the application is now live again. We display those input records. And now when we calculate the payroll, we can see that the tax rate is now 50%. So there we have it. What we've done in this video is installed Eclipse from the network installer provided with the WebLogic Server developer distribution. We've imported a Maven-based Java EE7 application. We've added a new server type for WebLogic Server 1221 to Eclipse, and we've published the application to it, which enables us to test and continue to develop it.